gentlemen, take your seats, please. Please, there are plenty of chairs here. The magic show is about to begin. Magic, magic, what's the big deal? You have a cape, a magic wand, you pull a rabbit out of a hat, everybody gets excited. That's not hard. A perfect creme brulee. That's hard. Oh, I'm thrilled to introduce our magical guests, who I hope will make the money disappear from your wallets. <laughs> And now, here are the greatest magicians in the world, Simon the Sorcerer. Oh, that was wonderful. And now, the fabulous Maurice Gillette. But certainly not least, the legendary Alexander the Great. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm afraid all this excitement has already taken a toll. I must rest. And there's no better place for absolute peace and quiet than the bottom of a pool. This watertight coffin holds a 15-minute supply of air. But I will be underwater for two hours. Oh, this ass. I don't suppose we could manage to keep him down there for two days. Uh, you all know my husband's physician, Dr. Blake. He'll be standing by just in case. Until we meet again. Now, that looks very dangerous to me. While Alexander is at the bottom of the pool, the magic will continue. Come on, Cleopatra, give me a kiss. Look, I think Cleopatra needs a personality change, don't you? <laughs> Simon says, say abracadabra. 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 Oh! I can't look. I read one time where an assistant forgot to... No, no, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Quick, a novena for the nice lady. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to awaken Alexander the Great. Stay back. Everyone stay back. Dr. Blake, is something wrong? He's dead. He's dead? Oh, my God. Well, did he suffocate or drown? He was shot.
Oh, skinny surfboards. Skis, Henry. Oh, really? I've been trying to get you to go skiing for years. I know. Why the sudden interest? Foolish question. Dad, I'd like you to say hello to Laura Hugo. Hello, Laura Hugo. My pleasure. I've heard a lot about you. It's about time somebody got my son to take a few days off. He certainly won't listen to me. We're only going to Big Bear, and you got to promise to call me if anything comes up. Like what? Like work. Like, forget it. You've caught your quota of murderers for this month. Could you pack an extra sweater? He won't need it. <laughs> and don't forget about our appointment Saturday morning at 10. Don't worry, I wouldn't miss it for anything, Dad. Burke's resident. Who is it, Henry? For your father. Thanks. Yeah, I can meet you. That'll be fine. Who was it, Dad? Oh, my accountant. He wants to go over my tax deductions. Have a good time. Well, let's keep that traffic. <laughs> Okay, Dad, where's the murder? Amos! Peter! Yo! Hey, did you get around? <laughs> what are you doing here? Catering. How are you? I'm in shock. I tell you, a souffle drops, that's one thing, but this murder, ooh, this murder's killing me. I mean, I thought to myself, did I check the date on the shrimp? I thought that, that that's what did it. I thought that I killed him. You? Yeah, me. I mean, Alexander the Magnificent, the Great, whatever the heck his name is, was sitting right over there eating my crepes before he went into the coffin. That's what he was eating, you understand? When the doctor said he was dead, I thought, oh, that's it, food poisoning. Ha, 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 ha. I can't tell you how relieved I was when I found out that he was shot. I got crab legs. Maybe later, Vinny. Okay. Chief, this is Dr. Blake. He discovered the murder. I didn't realize he was dead at first. Then I noticed the bullet hole. He was shot in the heart. No exit wounds, so the bullet's still in there. Very little bleeding. His death must have been instantaneous. How long has he been dead? Not more than two hours. So he could have been shot while underwater. Had to be. Sixty people saw Alexander the Great alive when he entered the coffin and dead when he came out. He was a magician. Maybe they only think they saw what they saw. Well, we also have it on tape. A video crew shot the whole thing. How could anyone shoot a man in a coffin underwater? You find a gun in the coffin? No, no gun anywhere. Maybe the bullet was fired through the coffin. No bullet holes. And it's bone dry inside the coffin. Wait, maybe a little man in a little tiny scuba suit swam into the coffin and then shot him in his magnificence and then escaped during the confusion down the drain. Then Maybe not. Remove the body and take the coffin apart at the lab. Amos. Oh, Amos, I'm so glad you came. Isn't it awful? Who could have done such a thing? In magic as a murder, the first question shouldn't be who done it, but how was it done? Burke's law. <laughs> Judge, this is my son, Peter. Oh, hi, sweetie. Nice to meet you. Nothing like a murder. To ruin a charity event, my party has turned into a wake. Not that I can't handle tragedy. I buried four husbands already, but I've always managed to make the best of it. In fact, I think dear Noah is getting ready to go to. Dr. Blake, would you check on Noah? Make sure that he's not undone by all this excitement. Of course. Mrs. Stark, who's that woman over there? Oh, that's Michelle Ryder, Alexander's daughter. Oh, poor baby. She and her father had the most horrible fight just before the party, and now he's dead. I'll go talk to her. And I understand Alexander had an assistant. Oh, yes. Carol Woodruff. She's upstairs changing. It's the last door on your right. Thank you. Why do we say horrible things to people we love? Things we'd never say to strangers. What did you and your father fight about? Money. We always fought about money. I was my father's business manager. Or should I say I used to be my father's business manager? Used to be? I quit a year ago. My father was always on the brink of bankruptcy. He had to have the best, even when he couldn't afford it, especially when he couldn't afford it. Why were you here today? He called. He said he needed to see me. He gave me a hug, a kiss, and surprise, surprise, he said he needed to borrow some money. What'd you say? I told him to take a long look in the mirror. I mean, here he is, one of the highest paid magicians in the world, asking his unemployed daughter for money. He called me an ingrate. 
I, I said he was hopeless and a few other things I don't care to repeat. But now... Miss Ryder, do you know how your father could have been shot in that coffin? No. How is that trick normally done? There's enough air in the coffin for a normal person to breathe for about 15 minutes. But my father could, could lower his pulse rate, putting him in a state of near death. He could stay down as long as three hours. I saw him do it many times. Do you know why anybody would want to kill your father? Magic is a very small world. There's a lot of jealousy, even hatred. A lot of people didn't like my father, but enough to kill him? Chief Burke, homicide. Oh, how do you do? I guess you have some questions. Yes, about uh, who or what's in this box. <laughs> it's just Heidi. Hey, put me out of here. I want to see him. <laughs> well, what did you expect, Julia Roberts? Heidi, behave yourself. Chief, this is Heidi. Heidi, this is Chief Burke. Chief, huh? What tribe? That's police chief, Heidi. The chief is here to ask if I know anything about who might have killed Alexander. Do you? No. I've only worked for him a couple of months. I'm a magician. We're magicians. OK. Alexander was helping us polish our act. Next week, we were going to start opening for him. I have no idea who'd want to kill him. I do. <laughs> I know who it is. It was that crumb de la crumb, Marie Stilette. Why him? Or was it Simon the Sorcerer? Or now that I think of it, that caterer is a pretty strange character. You've noticed that. Actually, Heidi does have a point. There seemed to be a lot of bad blood between Alexander and the other magicians. Do you think one of them could have done it? Well, the way Alexander the Great was killed, I think the magicians would be a good place to start. The uh, basic principle of a magic trick is perfectly simple. So you uh, suspend belief. Very good. Hmm. How'd you do that? People always believe what they think they are seeing. Would you consider shooting Alexander in a locked coffin underwater a magic trick? Ooh, and then some. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. See, I do this trick where I'm locked into a safe and then locked into a building, and then they dynamite the building, and 40 stories of concrete falls on my head. Well, now, I have to be dead, right? Wrong. Actually, I'm out there in the audience when that dynamite goes off. Oh, it, it is a great trick. How do you do it? I'll give you a hint. See, it doesn't matter whether it's a safe or a coffin or a bag of snakes. The trick is not in getting out. It's in getting in. You mean Alexander may never have gotten into the coffin? But even if he didn't get in and was killed someplace else, I mean, how did the dead body get back inside the coffin? <laughs> That's the part I can't figure out. <laughs> oh, I am going to miss him. You were good friends. He was my mentor. But as usually happens, the uh, student surpasses the master. And that's where our uh, relationship became a little bit strained. Do you own a gun, Mr. Gillette? Oh, good heavens, no. They're too much trouble at airports. I'll tell you who does own a gun, though. It's uh, Simon the Sorcerer. If I was going to kill Alexander the near great, I would never pick something as mundane as a bullet in the heart. I mean, where's the style? Where's the showmanship, the pizzazz? Did you and Alexander get along? <sighs> <laughs> I hated his guts. Why? He was a classical magician. Old school illusions, strictly for those easily entertained. I'm an innovator, constantly pushing that magic envelope. I saw your last TV special. You know, the one with the elephant and the aircraft carrier? You made the elephant disappear. No, the aircraft carrier. Now that's magic. Of course, Alexander never missed an opportunity to ridicule my act. 
So the only thing magic about my act was that people would pay to see it. When Alexander climbed into the coffin, he was alive. When it was open, he had been shot to death. Any idea how it was done? No. I have to admit, it's a heck of a trick. Do you own a gun? I work with dangerous animals. Of course I do. Show it to us. Sure. Well, I guess I forgot to pack it. What kind of gun is it? It's a Beretta. Nine millimeter. Oh, here it is. Careful. We're gonna need to examine that. No problem. Show. Oh. What happened to our fireworks? They're part of your act. Our grand finale, but we never got there. A fitting end to a most disastrous day. Chief, we've got a big problem. What? I think you better see for yourself. Excuse me. Alexander the Great's body is gone. He disappeared. Now that's a good trick. We're about to load Alexander into the ambulance. And the fireworks started, so we looked to see what all the commotion was about. And when we turned back, the body was gone. Fireworks must have been a diversion. Well, but why take the body? Without a body, it's hard to prove there was a murder. And without a body, it'll be impossible to find out exactly how he was killed. If he was killed. Peter, you talk to the valet. See if anyone left the house during the fireworks. OK. And you're going to have to tell Alexander's daughter that we lost her father's body. And I'll find out if our corpse was a corpse. Are you absolutely sure Alexander the Great was dead? I don't understand. Well, Alexander performed his coffin trick by slowing his pulse and his breathing. He could put himself in a trance. His heart practically stopped. How long did you take his pulse? 30 seconds? Kid stuff for him. But the wound, I definitely saw the bullet hole. You sure it wasn't makeup? Chief Burke, the man was dead. He was shot in the chest, I'm sure of that. I think I'm sure of that. You say he could practically stop his heart? That's right. I suppose it's possible he wasn't dead. How embarrassing. Sorry, Chief, I can't find Alexander's daughter. That's because she took off during the fireworks. Hello? Valet couldn't tell. And she wasn't the only one who took off. Maurice Gillette also got out of here in a hurry. Valet said he almost ran him down. Well, maybe the daughter and Maurice were working together. I mean, one of them sets off the fireworks and the other one steals the body. It's possible. At this point, anything is possible. We're not even sure we have a murder. We don't have the body. We don't have the murder weapon. The only thing we're sure of is... Is there anything we're sure of? Ramon, stay with me. Amos, this is your department. I have heard of mashed potatoes with lumps, but this, this is ridiculous. Look at this. I am never going to be able to get the taste of this 45 out of these potatoes. They're ruined. The whole pot's ruined. Unless I make a puff or shepherd's pie. A 45 caliber Colt. One shot's missing from the clip. Mashed potato and gunpowder residue in the barrel. So it's been fired recently. We won't know if it's the murder weapon until we find the body. Simon the Sorcerer's Beretta. A single round's been fired from it recently, too. No bullet hole, no spent cartridge, no hidden compartments. That's right. That doesn't give us much. I ran a check on Alexander the Great. His daughter was right, he was a financial mess. Then I ran a check on her. Michelle Ryder has over $200,000 in the bank. Not bad for a girl who says she's been out of work for the last year. Not bad, but very suspicious. Hmm. Talk about suspicious. I ran the gun serial number. Guess who it belongs to? Maurice Gillette. So I lied. Big deal. If your gun was used to kill Alexander the Great, it is a big deal. Why'd you lie? Uh, I don't know. I panicked, I guess. Look. 
I found out my gun was missing right after Alexander was shot. I was afraid that if I told you that, you wouldn't believe me. I was afraid that you might think I killed him. He was seen leaving the fundraiser in a hurry. Oh, you bet I was in a hurry. I was late for a radio interview, and then I had to get back to my workshop to rehearse. Was my gun used to kill Alexander? We don't know. Yet. Ah, that's my newest toy. A hundred blades of death. Uh, would you like to help me try it out? Sure. Mm. You just get right in there. Oh, well, there you go. What do you mean you don't know if it was my gun? Don't you have tests to determine those sort of things? We need a bullet. No body, no bullet. You know, it is a little cramped in here. I'll give you some air. Feel anything? Nope. It's very funny, Maurice. Ah! Peter! Peter! Just kidding. Oh, don't. No body, huh? Alexander the Great's body disappeared from the fundraiser about the same time you did. Dad? Dad, open up. Dad. You know, that's very interesting. That just might explain everything. Dad! What are you talking about? Maybe he's not dead after all. <laughs> Alexander's lifelong dream was to top Houdini, to do that which the great master could never even do himself. Come back from the dead. No easy trick. Neither is this. Now, as far as I know, there's only one way to do that. Don't die in the first place. If someone wanted to fake his death, who better than a master magician? Any ideas where he might be? Well, if he's not dead, maybe he just went home. assistant said the keys are in the mouth of the gargoyle. Ah! What? Just kidding. Now we're even. I just scared myself in the mirror. <laughs> A dummy. Hello. Are you looking for me? Hello. Are you looking for me? You think there was any chance that that was a hologram in the coffin? I think you'd better talk to Alexander's assistant. <laughs> Don't listen to her. She doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> and now, for my last trick, I'm going to make Carol disappear. <laughs> oh, really? Well, this I've got to see. Kippity bumpity boom! Bravo! That's a fun show. Oh, thanks. 
Who's the hunk with a high cheekbone? <laughs> I'm Detective Burke. Heidi, are you single? Heidi? Well, are you? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Don't let this one get away. Just ignore her. <laughs> five, 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 four, six, four. She loves Italian food and bluegrass. She's crazy about orchids, but roses will do in a pinch. Okay, well, <laughs> that's enough. Remember, five, 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 four, six, four. Sorry. Now, what can I do for you? <laughs> Alexander's been experimenting with holograms for a while, but he wasn't ready to try them out in public yet. It was Alexander in the coffin, not a hologram. You sure? I saw Alexander get into the coffin. It was lowered into the water before my eyes. He had to be in there. Then where's the body? Have you asked Simon the Sorcerer? Why would he know? A couple of days ago, Simon threatened to kill Alexander. Or I think he did. You're not sure? Not exactly. See, I overheard a phone conversation between Alexander and Simon. I didn't really think much of it at the time, but then when Alexander was murdered, I remembered it. What exactly did he hear? Alexander accused Simon of stealing one of his tricks. A capital crime among magicians. Alexander was furious. He threatened to sue Simon. Then Simon must have screamed or something because Alexander held the phone away from his ear. You know the way you do when people scream. Then Alexander yelled into the phone, you don't scare me, Simon. Then he hung up. And it sounds like a threat, doesn't it? I'm sure I'd like to find out. But Simon is playing Caesars in Las Vegas. That's okay, I could use a vacation. Thanks a lot. Don't forget, five, 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 four, six, four. Detective Burke, it's nice to see you again. How was your flight? Terrific. Good. Please sit down. Thanks. Don't worry. Ignatius has been dead for five years. He used to be the star of my show. I'd make a huge ring of fire appear in the middle of the stage. I'd jump on his back and we'd leap through the blazing inferno. Ignatius wasn't afraid of anything. <laughs> you know, Simon, there's something you forgot to tell us about your relationship with Alexander the Great. You threatened to kill him. Did I? Over the phone. Oh, that. <laughs> I threatened to skin him alive and feed his epidermis to my Bengal tiger. I never said I'd kill him. Did you ever steal tricks from Alexander? Never. Why do he accuse you of it? Oh, he was always broke. He probably thought I'd settle out of court just to avoid the nuisance. Looking for something? Not anymore. Oh, Arnold, you naughty boy. Sneaking out of your cage again. Say hello to Detective Burke. <laughs> Hello, Arnold. <laughs> Pleasure's all mine. Oh, uh, by the way, we examined your gun. We found one bullet had been fired. Oh, that's right. I had no choice. About a month ago, Brutus started to attack a woman in the front row during the midnight show. I had to shoot him. Brutus? You're standing on him. It's hard to kill the ones you love. Your message sounded urgent, George. Oh, Amos, I just can't believe that I'm going to be widowed again. There's no justice in the world. Why should I have to experience so much suffering? Is Noah dying? Well, let's just say that I've canceled all his appointments for next week. Noah says that he has something to tell you. But, Amos, I was thinking afterwards I could use some consoling. Are you free for dinner tonight? He isn't dead yet, Georgia. Well, then I don't have to wear black. How is he, Doctor? I'm lousy. Who's here? Sweetheart, it's Chief Burke. Oh, good. And come closer, Chief. There. Uh, closer. Try not to excite him, huh? I, uh... 
I know who set off the fireworks. You do? Why didn't you tell us yesterday? And watching all the excitement tired me out. I fell asleep. And then when I woke up, I forgot. And now I, I remember. Who did it? That girl. The beautiful girl with the dummy. I don't know her name. Carol. Carol Woodruff. Keep a surveillance team at her apartment and the carnival. I want Carol Woodruff picked up. I hit the jackpot. Simon the sorcerer. Quarter slots at the airport. 500 bucks. Tell me about Simon. Not much to tell. He admits they fought, denies he killed him. You believe him? I don't know. He's a magician. His job's to fool you. At least we finally know who set off the fireworks. Noah Stark saw Carol Woodruff, our talented ventriloquist, light the match. You pick her up? She's disappeared. Alexander's daughter has disappeared. Alexander's body has disappeared. Now Carol Woodruff. 555 five, 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 six, That's Carol's number. There's no one home, Peter. I've got men watching her house. Maybe she's got a machine. Hi, this is Peter Burke. I'm looking for Heidi. I have reason to believe that Carol's in some kind of trouble. Please, Heidi, call me as soon as you can, day or night. It's important. You're leaving a message for a block of wood. We are desperate. And tired. I'm going to bed. Good night, guys. You've kept Saturday morning open, haven't you, Peter? Yes, Dad. Good. Chief Burke? Oh. Well, thank you. Peter, bed will have to wait. A silent alarm just went off at Alexander the Great's home. Check the perimeter, no sign of force entry, all doors and windows are locked. Could be a false alarm. Let's find out. Okay, you two check upstairs. It's just a dummy. That's no dummy. Alexander was shot and killed with the 45. Ballistics confirmed it was fired from Maurice Gillette's Colt. Now we're getting somewhere. Not really. I gave Maurice a lie detector test. He passed it with flying colors. He didn't kill Alexander, and he didn't steal the body. Sorry, Peter. But a magician tricking a polygraph machine doesn't surprise me. Or me, but I believe him. The only thing Maurice is guilty of is breaking and entering. Why was he there? To steal Alexander's notebooks. Maurice thought that if he could get Alexander's secrets, then he would be the greatest magician in the world. All right. Assuming you're right, and Maurice is only guilty of breaking and entering, who killed him? I'm still working on that. Chief Burke. Yeah, he's here. Hello? I got your message. Where are you hiding? Santa Monica, end of the pier. I'll wait for you. It's Carol she wants to meet. Where's Heidi? She couldn't come. Too ashamed. Shame to what? The lies I've told you. You set off the fireworks. A diversion. So Michelle could steal her father's body. Why? She wanted him to become the most famous magician in the world. If his death were surrounded in mystery, if the body was never found, he'd be immortal. Geraldo, here we come. So after he was killed, Michelle came to me and offered me money if I'd help her. I told her I'd do it for nothing. 
Why would you want to be an accomplice to a murder? You think I murdered my father? You found out about the money. The $200,000 you embezzled from him. You fought at the fundraiser, then you killed him. No. That money is my father's, but I didn't steal it from him. I, I was secretly putting it away for him so he wouldn't end up penniless in his old age. I really screwed up, didn't I? Big time. I know this sounds crazy, but when I saw my father dead, the first thought that ran through my mind was to fulfill his dream. Immortality. If I could make him disappear one last time, easier said than done. First, I took him to a funeral parlor to have him cremated. But they wouldn't take the body without a death certificate. Then I wanted to bury him on a hill overlooking the ocean. Ever tried digging a grave in solid rock? Then I just took him home and hid him in his favorite prop until I could figure out what to do. Then you found him. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye, but I thought I could do something for him in the end. Make him a legend, bigger than Houdini. Was I wrong to do that? I think a simple I love you pop would have been enough. Don't disappoint me on Saturday. I'm counting on you. Ten o'clock. I won't. I promise. But first, maybe we can make some sense out of this murder. Fruits have to be right before they're plucked and eaten. Ouch, bad Burke's Law, Dad. No. Bad Tarzan movie. I have no idea what it means, but it does lead me to think we have a lot of rotten fruit here. Well, you said it yourself. We're never going to find out who did it until we figure out how it was done. No, that was bad Burke's Law. Let's go watch a murder. Slow, Peter. Frame by frame. Watch as the coffin closes. Any sign of a gunshot just before it's healed? No. Wait a minute. All right, we'll look at the end again. Oh, stay back. Everyone stay back. Stay back. Everyone stay back. He's dead. There's only one person who could have killed Alexander the Great. You know who killed him? Knowing and proving are two different things. All right, Peter. It's time I taught you a magic trick. How to make a murderer appear out of thin air. I think we figured out the puzzle of Alexander's murder. But to prove it, I'm going to need your help. Would you all please stand where you were when Alexander's coffin was raised out of the water and opened? Carol, will you and your helpers seal me in there like Alexander was in a stunt? For two hours, Alexander the Great's coffin was submerged in the bottom of the pool. Nobody got in the pool. No holes were found in the coffin. Now, how did it get there? How was he shot? Open the coffin now exactly the way you did it the other day. And that's when you shot him. Isn't it, Dr. Blake? I don't know what you're talking about. Alexander was alive when he got in the coffin and alive when the coffin was open. You shot Alexander after the trick was over, when you were examining him. But how could he? I was standing right here. No, actually, you were there. Yes. He told you to step back. But there was no gun. It was hidden in the one thing every doctor carries, a little black bag. You used a silencer to muffle the sound when you shot through your medical bag, didn't you? Shot him? <laughs> I'm a doctor. Here, look. There are no bullet holes. No, no. It's not in this bag. 
because it's brand new. I noticed it when I came to visit Noah, but when I checked the video, I noticed a different bag, much older. Where is that bag, Doctor? There is no other bag. You thought you disposed of it, but we found it. You couldn't have found it. You killed Alexander the Great, didn't you, Doctor? Yes. Why? Dr. Blake, I know about your daughter. Once we suspected you, it wasn't hard to discover your motive. My daughter and her husband lived in New York, and last year they were killed in a car accident by a drunk driver. Alexander the Great. He disappeared after the accident, and when he showed up the next morning, he was sober. The police could prove he was drinking in the bar, but couldn't prove that he was behind the wheel of the car. It was the greatest trick of his life, getting away with murder. At Diana's funeral, I promised my daughter and myself that Alexander would pay. I talked Georgia into using magic as a theme at this year's charity event. And I went to see Alexander's performances. That's when I figured out how I was going to do it. Who's my gun? A happy accident. I brought my own gun with me, but then I saw your gun when you were unpacking. Framing you would have made my plan even more foolproof. It was a good trick, wasn't it? No, Doctor. It was murder. Pick you up around 10. Just bring your bathing suit and a smile. <laughs> bathing suit and a smile? That's the best you can do? I'll see you then. What was that all about? A double date with Carol and Heidi. Did I hear 10 o'clock? Yeah. Peter, for a week I've been reminding of our date this morning. I can't believe it. Dad, my... my... It's very upsetting. Let me explain. I can't believe you'd forget. Dad, I didn't. <laughs> My date with Carol is for tomorrow. I didn't forget about today. I wouldn't. Ready? Thank you.